Hello, everybody, and welcome to Adobe Live. My name is Flynn, and I'm joined by Ramez Hari Krishna Sami. Ramez, how are you doing? Hi, Flynn. I'm good. How are you? I'm really good. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm such a huge fan of your work, <laughs> um, but it's been way too long since we've had you on Adobe Live. So, um, a, a lot of what you do here for us is photo manipulation, digital artwork. So, can you tell us a bit more, like about what you do every day, day in the life? Sure. Uh, <laughs> So uh, again, I'm a digital artist. Um, I'm working as a, a senior art director uh, in a company called Mind Valley. <laughs> um, we're sharing we're sharing your desktop now, and yeah, we're checking out some owls. So what is going on here? So I was thinking to create a character from the movie uh, Legends of the Guardians. I'm not sure if you guys watched it before. It was out like ten years ago. Um, again, directed by Zack Snyder. Um, I think it would be nice to just recreate the owl. I think I want to create a story where, again, just imagine Al um, is rescuing a scroll. Um, in this session, I will literally recreate the Viking helmets. Like for example, I will use okay. some elements from stock images, but I will show you how I create it from scratch. So yeah, amazing, awesome. So we're gonna start off with um, adding the background. So I'm gonna just drag in an image of the sky. There you go. So I have a stock image here, uh, image of the sky. I'm going to just blow it up really big like this, uh, maybe larger. I'm going to just place it somewhere here like this. Just open up my layers so that you guys can see how it's done. So again, um, I like to adjust the color in the first phase itself. Some of the artists like to wait until the end. Um, again, I, when I adjust the color way earlier, um, so I, by that steps, I can actually see how it looks like at the end, right? So I don't have to wait until the end to adjust right. the colors. So let me just add in one more image, which is the main character, the owl. I really, really love the, the positioning. I think it would be nice to just blow it up this big. Again, as I mentioned earlier, he's carrying a scroll. So it'd be nice to just increase it like this. Again, I'm uh, making it larger. I'm going to adjust the color right after I crop the bird out from the background. So in order to do that, like always press on W, quick selection shortcut, select subject right on top there and everything will get selected. It's perfect again because it's against a white background. It's easily selected, so you can see all the detailing is okay. You can see some part not that uh, it's not selected, but it's okay. We can do a manual selection later. Uh, now it's the best part. I really, really love sharing this again. Color lookup, my my yes. most amazing tips ever. A lot of people <laughs> love this. So I'm gonna go to color lookup. Uh, it's right at the bottom under color adjustment. Click on color lookup. When you click on that, you'll get a preset of like colors. Again, my favorite is tree and uh, edgy amber. Fall uh, colors and future blick. Okay, now see what happens after I click on future blick. Boom. Cool. The color is just amazing. I want to create one uh, at the bottom on the sky, and I'm gonna add another color lookup. And I'm gonna this time click on edgy amber. So I'm gonna reduce the opacity. You can see a mixture of both. But I'm gonna just duplicate the sky, and then I'm gonna go to multiply. Now, do you see the difference? The lighting is super important in photo manipulation so that, you know, people should question it whether it's real or photo manipulation. In order to achieve that, mm. that's why I always, always say that, always make sure that you adjust the colors um, uh, so that it looks real. And I'm going to press on brightness and contrast. And I'm going to mask it because again, I'm going to just adjust the uh, owl for now. I'm going to leave the background because we can always do a final touch later on. And this is the owl, and I'm going to make sure that it looks darker like this. So when I slide, you can see it, it doesn't like the brightness is amazing in Photoshop because it's, it's not da just darkening it, but it's also maintaining the texture of the owl's fur. If you notice, like, for example, it's, mm. it's right like this, super amazing. So I'm going to just make this darker slightly just like this. Okay. Right, uh, and then you can see you still have some lighting on top, which is perfect. I can use that as a guidance uh, to create some sort of like a lighting at the back. Always make sure that your flow is lowered. Opacity you can maintain at hundred percent, so you don't have to worry so much about that. Flow is like the intensity of the brush, mm. and smoothing you can just leave it at ten percent. Unless you're drawing a very smooth curves, then you probably want to increase the smoothing. 
So I'm gonna just go in here and create the lighting. There you go. And so you're thinking about where the, the light is coming from, from the, the clouds, right? Like it's coming yes. from that particular yeah. direction and you're trying yes. to kind of, yeah. Okay. So I'm cool. trying to recreate the lighting uh, based on what I have. I can show you before and after so you guys know what am I doing all this while. So I'm gonna go to the masking there and I'm gonna right click and disable the layer. Just focus on the owl. Can you see that? Yeah. It's flat. So, but once I on it, you can see the lighting start to mm. come out. I'm gonna darken this area, right? Which makes more sense because the light is flashing from the top. So I need to make sure that these areas are darkened. Again, when you start adding more and more effects like this, like darkening area and stuff like that, your subject will be, rather than looking flat, it looks like a 3D. Yeah. Uh, something that you can achieve just using Photoshop. Again, not talking about any other 3D software, you can create that using uh, Photoshop itself. Before I create this, right, by just looking at all the stock images, which I'm just gonna show you guys what we have. Like for example, these are the stock images that I have. Right, so we, we already have the Viking King helmet, but trust me, it won't look the same. <laughs> so let's see before and after how it looks like before and after uh, adding in shadows, right? So I'm gonna hide the shadows now. Can you see it looks flat? And if I hide the brightness, it's even flat. Mm. So again, it increases the detailing part of the, the, the subject that we have. Nearby the ankle here, the, the leg, we're gonna add in uh, like a accessories. Accessories. I like it. Yes. <laughs> so I have this stock image over here. I'm gonna just get press on W, select subject. Uh, I'm gonna just uh, resize it. Again, whatever techniques that I'm showing here, uh, it's like the same answer or, uh, or, or the same step that I will use to create my other manipulations that you see on my social media. Obviously, the owl is holding the scroll. So I'm going to bring this scroll right below the owl, just like this. Nice. There you go. And the colors are all adjusted accordingly. You can see overall of the manipulation, everything looks subtle. You know, there's some sort of like a fade effects, but because of the texture of the scroll, which is mm. made of like a, like a gold plated thing, it looks so sharp. Uh, compared to the rest of the photo manipulation. Mm. Uh, you should always fix it by reducing the multiply. Just don't make sure it's 100%. Reduce it. When you reduce it, and then maybe like 40-50%, see before and after, there's a difference, right? Mm. Uh, and now I'm going to slowly remove the lines around it. You literally can do this in one click of a button. All you have to do is click on the scroll, on the masking, go to filter, other, and click on minimum. Once you click that, you get to see the line is now gone, right? Mm. Obviously, it's depending on the radius of the outline. So if I were to increase the radius, the more uh, thing will get masked out. So uh, for me, just one will work, one pixel. Here's also one of my favorite feature. Again, like I said, puppet wrap here. And then you're gonna, this is basically to move things around. Like for mm. example, if I don't like the way the wings are right now, I can even move it without affecting any other areas. Again, I can always lock things. Like for example, the head, I'm, I'm okay with it, but not the wings. I can adjust that. But for now, the wings are perfect. The head is perfect, except for the leg, right? That's for the feet. We're gonna do some adjustments. So here's what I'm gonna do. I am going to lock. So I'm gonna pin this. Basically, it's an area where I don't want things to move, right? Later, I'll show a quick demo how this works. For example, I'm going to lock every part of the owl's body to say that I am not going to move any of this except for the lick. So here you go. Done. Okay, see what happens if I move this. Any other Very part cool. of the body will never move because I am controlling this using the pin. And I am, again, like I said, the nail is supposed to be in in one of the hole. Again, I need to imagine this right this is happening in front of my eyes mm. so i know that the owl literally will slot in the nail into one of the hole and this one into this hole and yeah and so uh, just on the the puppet warp so does it need to be a smart object so smart object will have like for example if you want to undo this all you have to do is just click on the eyes you can mm. see the leg right there you go so yeah this is the uh, a good thing about smart object again i love having smart object in my thing because yeah. i know there are things 
if I would need it, the original file back, I know I need I can always double click on this and I can get back the original file. It's, that helmet was not meant for an owl because it's for a human head. Right. What I'm going to do now is I am going to create a new layer. Uh, and then I'm going to take my pen, my pen tool. And uh, again, there are many different settings under pen tool. Just choose the first one, the pen tool. And I am going to create a masking area. Uh, well, it's not that bad. Again, I don't have to do much adjustment. What I'm going to do is I'm doing just move this around here. Okay, I kind of like this one. And the next process is literally bringing in the helmet and masking it and resizing it according to the pattern that I want because right. it already has this texture in it <laughs> I don't have to do anything else so again I am just creating based on what I think it should look like until here and then move it up back do I bring back the helmet again no you all you have to do is just duplicate this uh, helmet that we created earlier bring that down and mask it and then move your helmet to get oh. the pattern that you want <laughs> boom <laughs> you're done <laughs> right so and you're wondering okay Ramesh that looks okay but it looks flat obviously because we haven't created the shadings yet and that's what we're going to do now you know how helmets are like vikings ones like if there's a you should have some sort of like a bevel looking uh shape around it right so i'm gonna create that look like a 3d right so i'm gonna create literally just brushing over right at the edge because i know that the lighting is coming from the top i'm gonna leave the rest of the lighting just like this and then here i am literally creating the shape of the helmet at the back here because i think it would be nice to have a combo of a steel looking helmet plus a rubberish a leather looking helmet so i'm literally creating that okay so since the shape is already like this kind of happy with it so what i'm going to do is i'm going to bring in the leather helmet and okay, helmet number two helmet number two and i am going to mask it and switch the helmet to this side horizontally because so that it fits the head of the owl like this i think that might work okay so now we're going to work on the color adjustment of the um leather again i know the lighting is coming from the top i'm going to reduce the flow and voila just exactly how we did the wings the the, the side of the wings to be uh, slightly brighter i'm going to create that lighting here and the remaining part will be darkened Right, so it'll just help like add add it into the image, make it seem more part of the image, and also yes. like play with the light, like you've done with everything else. Correct. Um, very cool. It's like a little kind of shimmer of light. 